Welcome to Medwits Med Simple. In this video, we are going to learn about peritonitis. As we all know, itis stands for inflammation. So, peritonitis is inflammation of peritoneum. Peritoneum is the layer which lines the abdominal cavity. It can be divided into visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum. Visceral peritoneum is the layer which lines the internal abdominal organs such as stomach, liver, and parietal peritoneum is the layer which is the innermost layer of the abdominal cavity. Peritoneal cavity is the largest cavity of the body and it is rich it has a rich network of lymphatic vessels and capillary plexus. Normally only a few milliliter of fluid is present in the peritoneal cavity and this is usually a straw colored fluid. It helps in lubricating the organs and also enhances peristalsis which is the normal physiological movement of the intestines. Peritonitis can occur when there is bacterial invasion into the peritoneal cavity. Now, one of the common routes is when an ulcer in the duodenum or stomach perforates can lead to spillage of the contents present inside the bowel and it can cause secondary infection of the peritoneal cavity causing peritonitis. The causes of peritonitis can be bacterial as I said before, chemical for example pile peritonitis when there is spillage of bile into the peritoneal cavity causing inflammation and peritonitis, allergic causes example starch peritonitis in certain cases when there is exposure to the starch powder present in the latex gloves of the doctor while operating into the peritoneal cavity patients certain patients can develop allergic reactions and it is called allergic peritonitis and traumatic causes for example iatrogenic which is induced by the doctor while doing an abdominal surgery if they by mistake perforate the bowel and causing a spillage of the bowel contents into the peritoneal cavity it can cause peritonitis and ischemic causes when in cases like strangulated hernia when the hernia when the bubble sac in hernial content is getting strangulated the blood flow to that part of the bubble and peritoneum is um, blocked leading to ischemic uh, changes and hence peritonitis can occur now what are the routes by which the bacterial bacteria reach the peritoneum one of the route which i told earlier was perforation so in perforation when the ulcer perforates there is spillage of the contents into the peritoneal cavity and along with it it brings the bacteria uh, along with the contents which are present in the bubble as we know it is rich in bacteria transmural translocation is another route and it is seen in conditions like pancreatitis which is inflammation of pancreas because of the inflammation occurring in pancreas, uh, the, there is changes which is occurring in the peritoneal cavity and there will be leakage of fluid. Along with the fluid, there is shift of bacteria from the intestines into the peritoneal cavity causing infection. And in females, the genital tract infection like in pelvic inflammatory disease, there is rich source of bacteria and it can spread to the peritoneal cavity causing peritonitis and there can be contamination from outside for example during surgery or uh, following trauma when there is an open injury to the abdomen leading to entry of the bacteria from the external environment into the peritoneal cavity and a very rare route of spread is hematogenous which occurs in case of septicemia when there is spread of bacteria in the bloodstream of the patients and through bloodstream it can reach the peritoneal cavity causing peritonitis Usually it is polymicrobial like most of the times the, we know that the, bac the uh, bacterial flora of the intestine is not just one bacteria or two bacteria. Usually it is a combination of multiple bacteria. So the commonly found bacteria causing peritonitis are E. coli, streptococci, enterococci, bacterioids and clostridium. Now there are two forms of peritonitis, localized peritonitis and generalized or diffuse peritonitis. Localized peritonitis is when there is inflammation of peritoneum at only the foci of the pathology occurring. So it can occur in the subphrenic space which is above the liver and it can occur in the pelvic cavity or in the peritoneal cavity proper. So the peritoneal cavity can be divided into supracolic and infracolic compartments by the transverse colon. So if it is occurring above the uh, transverse colon it can be called supracolic and if it is occurring below the transverse colon it can cause infracolic. So because of the peritonitis, the omentum tries to seal the perforation 
and there can be formation of additions with the abdomen within the abdominal contents so the various abdominal contents like the intestine stomach can stomach can get stuck together because of additions and then the peritoneum also uh, loses its shine and it becomes red because of inflammation and numerous fibrin fibrin flakes also form within the peritoneal cavity and as a protective mechanism the peristalsis of the intestine reduces because uh, if there is more peristalsis there can be more leakage of the content through the perforation into the abdominal cavity hence the peristalsis reduces now generalized or diffuse peritonitis is occurring when the process of localization by the body is affected now it is seen in cases where the speed of contamination is faster for example if the patient is having a sudden rupture of appendix leak leading to spillage of all the content suddenly into the abdomen that is like a sudden reaction and there is a diffuse change occurring in the peritoneal cavity so the diffuse peritonitis occurs and if the peristalsis is stimulated by eating uh, as i said before uh, the body is trying to decrease the peristalsis here and to decrease the spillage of the content through the perforation but if we do activities like eating which stimulates the peristalsis there can be more leakage of the contents into the peritoneal cavity and hence uh, leading to diffuse peritonitis and if the uh, infection is being caused by highly virulent bacteria Uh, the body's defense mechanism as well as the effect of antibiotics won't be that sufficient so it can lead to early progression to diffuse peritonitis and in patients with immunodeficiency such as in hiv infection their immunity won't be able to fight the infection as much as uh, the others hence they can develop diffuse peritonitis and in kids they have small omentum hence they it uh, they won't be able to contain the peritonitis so hence it leads to rapid progression to diffuse peritonitis in children clinical features in localized peritonitis will be abdominal pain usually over the mid abdomen and malaise anorexia nausea and fever and tachycardia are also seen localized guarding and rebound tenderness are clinical examination findings felt on palpation of the abdomen uh, i have made a video on examination of abdominal lump uh, so uh, if you have not watched the video yet i will provide the link for this video at the end of this video so if you are interested you can watch it uh, at the, after watching this video now in diffuse peritonitis the patients can have high grade fever severe abdominal pain which is diffuse and abdominal tenderness generalized guarding like we saw in uh, localized peritonitis you should there can be local guarding but here there is generalized guarding and the bowel sounds diminish that is because the as i said the peristalsis is reducing hence the bowel sounds are diminishing which can be found on auscultation with a stethoscope the abdomen will be on palpation it will be rigid and the abdomen can be distended the patient have characteristic faces called hippocratic faces which has uh, emotionless face sunken eyes and uh, uh, non reactive uh, face mainly without any emotions and the face looks very dull and it is very characteristic of diffuse peritonitis and the patients can develop circulatory collapse and even loss of consciousness baseline investigations such as ecg and urinary dipstick test can be done and blood electrolytes renal function test liver function test blood counts amylase to look for pancreatitis and cross matching to arrange for blood transfusion are done now the characteristic radiographic features of perforation or gas under diaphragm and the dilated bowel loops will also be seen because of diminished peristalsis the radiographic investigations are plain radiographs of the abdomen which are taken in erect and supine and an ultrasound of the abdomen and pelvis and a contrast enhanced ct scan will also be beneficial to localizing the pathology in most of the cases diagnostic aspiration of peritoneum is putting a needle into the peritoneal cavity and aspirating the contents which are present in the peritoneal cavity and sending them for investigations for diagnosis but since we have very advanced investigations radiographically uh, which are non invasive we usually prefer non invasive investigations these days management principles are correcting the fluid loss the patient will be very much dehydrated so hence we need to calculate the amount of fluids and we need to correct uh, give them the correct amount of fluid to correct the fluid loss and uh, 
then we also should make sure that we don't over correct the fluid causing circulatory overload pulmonary edema and conditions like that and make sure to insert foley catheter and nasogastric tube nasogastric tube is to decompress the stomach contents and the foley catheter is used to monitor urine output uh, early initiation of appropriate broad spectrum antibiotics is very essential because uh, it is a it is an uh, infective condition and it has uh, it is a polymicrobial condition broad spectrum antibiotics are usually preferred and there should be early initiation of antibiotics and adequate analgesia is required because adequate pain relief is necessary to prevent worsening of the patient's general condition surgery is the mainstay of treatment in most of the cases when the cause is a surgical cause for example a perforation of the bowel uh, so here we will be trying to remove the cause if there is any uh, local cause such as any existing abscess or presence of any purulent fluid in the uh, peritoneal cavity and we repair the defect which is present and that we have to give thorough peritoneal lavage with lo lots of saline sometimes mixed with antibiotic solution and uh, drainage of the peritoneal fluid is done and we need to make sure we don't leave behind any foci of infection. There is usually 10 percentage mortality rate uh, associated with peritonitis however it can be brought down by uh, proper uh, medical treatment and surgical appropriate surgical management. Complications can be septic shock, uh, paralytic ileus which is uh, absent bowel movements which is usually occurring here as a defensive mechanism to prevent further spillage of the contents into the cavity and abscess formation which is a collection of organized pus and additions of the contents within the abdominal cavity and sometimes death of the patient. If you like this video please hit the like button and share it to your friends who will be benefited by this video and subscribe to my channel Medwits Made Simple and join 60,000 medical students across the world and learn more concepts in an easier way. You can join my membership for early access of my videos and you can watch my videos two days before the rest of the world. As promised, here is the link for examination of abdominal lump video. You can click this and watch the video here. And you can watch the entire general surgery playlist here by clicking on the link you see on the screen right there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.